Hello! Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to respond to a viewer who asked the question, how does Excel calculate dates in the future? Here's the letter. Dear Danny, I just discovered your website and find it quite informative. Thank you. Here's where I need your help. Given a starting date, I want to be able to calculate the date and months in the future. I've been having trouble writing this formula. Do I have to count the number of days in each month? And if so, what about leap years? So my question is, given a starting date of 8308, and I will presume that he means or she means August 3rd, 2008, what will the date be 11 months in the future? How about years? What will the date be three years from the starting date? Any help is appreciated. Well, help is on the way. In today's lesson, we'll use the following functions, the date function, the today function. We'll use the functions for year, month, day, and I'll show you some interesting options with autofill. Let's begin. The simplest way to answer the question, what will the date be 11 months in the future, is to use autofill. In this case, I'm going to autofill, but not with the left mouse button. I'm going to use the right mouse button, and here's why. As I autofill using the right mouse button, when I release the right mouse button, I immediately am presented with the options. In this case, what I want to fill are the months. So the answer, 11 months from the starting date, will be July 3rd, 2009. This will work with August 3rd, 2008 as our starting date, but a different format. Right mouse click, fill down, and choose fill months. So 11 months in the future, July 3rd, 2009. The easiest way to do it, but remember, this is a static number. What if I want to have a dynamic relation? All right, then I want to use a function. Over here, I've made reference to our starting date, which was hard-coded. And over here in cell E4, I've used the following functions and formulas. I've used the date function, and inside the arguments, I've used different functions. The year function, the month function, incremented by 1. As we autofill it down, that will give us our answer for 11 months in the future, and also the day function. All right, here's how this works. Let's tear this apart. Equals date, left parentheses. I like to use the Control-A shortcut to bring up the function arguments dialog box. There are three arguments required, date, month, and year. However, we're going to use the year function, the month function incremented by 1, and the day function to give us the answer. So in our first argument, we'll use the year function and point to our cell included inside parentheses. For the month, we'll use the month function pointing to our cell, our starting date cell, inside parentheses, but we will increment it by one month. For our day function, we'll use the day function pointing to our starting cell. So we're using functions inside each one of the arguments. For the month, we incremented the month one month from our starting date according to the cell. Click OK, and there you go. So now when I fill this down, I have my answer. 11 months from the starting date will be July 3rd. Now remember, I use this as a reference to a static number. What if I change this to today? I'll use the today function equals today, left parentheses, right parentheses, and now my starting date has changed. It's referring over to cell B3. And each one of my dates has changed. So 11 months from today will be September 28, 2009. OK, let's explain some of the functions. The date function has three arguments. The date function requires the year, the month, and the date for the purpose of producing a serial number. A serial number is how Excel calculates dates. Here I've made a link over to our, um, our date, and I use the control shift tilde shortcut to produce the shortcut, I mean to produce the serial number. So today, or this date, August 3rd, 2008, is 39,663 days since 
January 1st, 1900, when Excel began tracking time. Over here, I'm making a reference to a cell that's using the today function. So using the control shift tilde shortcut, today is 39,749 days since January 1st, 1900. The year, month, and day functions are really functions that we use inside other functions, inside other formulas. OK, so here's the answer. The starting date of August 3rd, 2008, how do I calculate 11 months from that specific date? We use the date function. We refer using the year function to our starting date cell. We use the month function inside the date function, increment it by 11 to find the date that is 11 months from our starting date. And we use the day function inside our date function. There you go. For three years from today, now we're incrementing the year function. So we use the date function. And inside that, we use the year function pointing to our starting date, increment it by three for three years in the future. Use the month function inside the month argument. Use the day function inside the date function each one pointing to the uh, cell. OK, let's verify the number of days in the month. And it is a leap year. So I'm using a formula which is saying subtract January from February's first starting date to show me how many days were in the month, 31 days. In the case of February, give me the result of H6, which is March 1st, minus February 1st. And that's 21, 29 days because it's a leap year. All right, there you have it. I've answered the viewer's question. And we'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.